Hello and welcome wherever you are. In this video, we are going to look at how we can prepare a dry sample of iron 3 chloride in a school setting. That is to say, during the laboratory preparation. So, just like we had seen in our previous video on how we can use direct synthesis, we shall use the same method to prepare anhydrous iron 3 chloride. Direct synthesis basically involves combining two substances to form the product of our interest and in this case it is iron 3 chloride. The following setup is what we are going to use or it's what is actually used if at all you are to prepare this sample in the lab. When you look at this setup it appears complex but we shall try to simplify the setup. So first of all we have a glass tube here, a combustion tube. And in this combustion tube, we place in our iron wire or coil, the one that will react with, with the chlorine to form iron 3 chloride. So we have a combustion tube because it's good at withstanding very high temperatures. So obviously we must have some source of heat below the combustion tube that will help us heat this iron wire. And then we shall deal with dry chlorine if we want to prepare iron 3 chloride. In some cases, before the combustion tube, we tend to pass our chlorine gas through concentrated sulfuric acid. You may have here a container where you have your concentrated sulfuric acid and then our chlorine coming into it. So sometimes you might find some other setups that talk about the drying portion of chlorine first. So we can first dip or pass our chlorine into concentrated sulfuric acid to dry it but in our case actually we are going to just say we are bringing dry chlorine so we shall not need this setup of this concentrated acid so because we are having dry chlorine we have removed that setup so our dry chlorine will come and then it will be reacting with our iron wire but before we do that we must first ensure that we, we make our setup free from air how? Before we start heating our iron wire, we shall pass some chlorine gas through our setup such that we drive out all the present air so that our iron does not react with any oxygen or any other gas that may be present. So after that, we shall heat our iron wire until red hot. So we need to heat, strongly heat the iron wire until it becomes red hot that is to say until it starts glowing so at that point we shall pass our dry chlorine over our red hot ion so at this point even if we stop heating the reaction is kind of self-sustaining and the reaction will proceed as we shall see according to the equation so once it's red hot and we pass our dry chlorine once the reaction starts even if we stop heating the reaction will continue until the end product. So at that point we shall form our iron 3 chloride as per the equation. The heated iron which is red hot iron, red hot, together with our dry chlorine will form our iron 3 chloride. So obviously this iron 3 chloride because of the high temperatures and kind of the unidirectional flow of the chlorine gas, it may be in gaseous form. Remember iron 3 chloride actually undergoes sublimation. So at relatively high temperatures, this iron 3 chloride is a gas and it will be driven in, the, this, in this direction of flow. So once it reaches this region, usually this region is cooler, sometimes they even place it in some cool environment so that it can condense the iron 3 chloride gas back to solid. So at this point, our gaseous iron 3 chloride will condense and form our black iron 3 chloride solid. So this is just a container where we can store or have our product that we are preparing. However, immediately after this we have another tube that takes us to anhydrous calcium chloride. Now anhydrous calcium chloride is present because we don't want any water vapor present in the vicinity of our formed product. So we shall use anhydrous calcium chloride 
which is a good drying agent. So it will ensure that our anhydrous anhydrous anthric chloride does not have any water vapor roaming around. So we are, we are trying to ensure that there is no water present because this colleague of ours also has high affinity for water. This is a deliquescent substance. Deliquescent substance. It has a tendency of absorbing water vapor from the atmosphere and then dissolving in it. So because of that, we shall ensure that we provide a drying agent so that we keep it free from water vapor. And then the excess chlorine gas being poisonous, we shall leave it to escape to the fume cupboard. Just as a precaution, here we shall have our excess chlorine gas that will escape out. So this anthric chloride is important because it can be used as a lowest acid or as a catalyst in chlorination of aromatic compounds. So that is basically all about the lab, the lab preparation of anthric chloride, basically dry chlorine and then heated or red hot ion. Let me know in case you have a question on which part of the setup is challenging. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and then stay safe. See you in the next video. Bye bye.